Before we go on a scenic trip of the fort, we should know a few things about its history or its evolution to how it became the way it is today. Through the centuries, it has been attacked, invaded, damaged, rebuilt, and refortified. From Ana Cominos's accounts in the Alexiad in the late 1080s to its attacks by Latin pirates like Roger de Luria and Roger de Flor in the late 1200s and early 1300s, to its occupation by the Genoese Zaccaria family in 1304 that held it until 1329. It had undergone continuous repairs and major improvements, continuing under the Genoese reoccupation in 1346, continuing into the 1400s, the Ottoman takeover in 1566, and the temporary Venetian occupation in 1694 and 1695 by Antonio Zeno, all the way up to the modern times and the building of the new harbor. We will begin our journey of the fort at the sea walls, which face east towards Asia Minor. This is the older inner wall. Its foundations are from Byzantine times. Since then, this wall has been made thicker, heightened, and buttressed, all in response to the evolution of warfare. Eventually, a second wall was built, and through time, the two walls were filled in between and joined together. Excavations revealed these different phases of the first wall's evolution in conjunction with written accounts. The original interior wall, when it was excavated, revealed triangular arrow slits. It also revealed a walkway along the arrow slits and a mantlet wall or scarpa which buttressed that wall. The slits and walkway were taken away in the early 1400s when the wall was made thicker and taller. The mantlet wall or scarpa was added toward the late 1400s to buttress the wall. The outer curtain wall was added by Antonio Zeno during the brief Venetian occupation in 1694 and 1695. This was also the time that the space between the inner wall and the outer wall was filled in. Again, an evolution of a defense system in answer to gunpowder weaponry and artillery that was developing. The walls had to be even thicker and higher. At the external wall, several of the battlements were restored. The towers along the seaside wall don't exist anymore, except for the northeast corner, the quote-unquote Zeno Tower, even though Zeno didn't build it. It was a proto-Genoese tower, and the Genoese coat of arms has the date 1324 in Latin etched in it. The Justinian coat of arms is also present, and this tower, this proto-Genoese tower, is engulfed by a bigger bastion, as we can see in this diagram.
Here we see part of the seawall and tower that was demolished to expand the modern harbor. If you follow straight across, you will find another little fort that is still there, but in ruins, called Burzi. As you can see from the old engravings, the castle had an entrance here and the wooden boardwalk that went all the way across the seawall. Where the seawall was demolished, it looks like there was a two-tower entrance from some of the engravings that I have studied. The boardwalk went across all the way to the Zeno Tower. This was one of the three entrances of the fort. It was called Porta di Marina. Most of the wall from the Porta di Marina up to the Porta Maggiore is in ruins and in bits and pieces. On the street Theocritu, there are remnants of a tower that belonged to the southern wall and remnants of the wall itself with houses built on top of it. Now we move on to the bastion of St. George. The bastion of St. George is right next to the Porta Maggiore. St. George is another tower that engulfs an older tower, another proto-Genoese tower within it. We are going to now take a little walk through the entrance of the Porta Maggiore and see what we come across when we go inside. In this area here, where the ground is sealed, used to exist a fountain or a well. There are some old photographs which depict this. Next to where the fountain used to be is an Ottoman cemetery that still has the tombstones inside. Next, we climb up the southern wall and visit these towers one by one. First, we climb up to the bastion of St. George and we walk along the wall. There, we observe the older tower, which was eventually engulfed by the newer tower of St. George. We are now passing over the Porta Maggiore and we are going to look down at an opening of where the entrance is into the fort. You can see the tunnel that we passed when we entered on foot the Porta Maggiore. We continue walking on top of the southern wall walking towards the west and we come upon the next major tower again we see the old and the new 
we see the old square tower and the newer circular tower. Looking west, we see the next two towers of the southern wall. This is the first one, and as you can see, it had a tunnel which ran in a circular fashion around the circular tower itself. The western tower of the southern wall has clear timeline layers, the newer engulfing the older tower. Matriculations of the older tower are visible, which hints at the height and the location of an older wall. Here you can clearly see the separation of the older tower and the newer tower.
Now we arrive to the northern wall. We will examine these towers. At the northern wall was the third entrance called the Pano Portello. It was taken down and today is the street called Genoa. Old engravings and photographs show how the Pano Portello once looked. This small tower, which is in ruin, was on the east side of the Pano Portello. The next tower and bastion are in the middle of the north wall. The tower is full of machiculations and also carries the coat of arms of the Justinian family and Genova.
Here we see arrow slits on the body of the middle bastion. The slits have a circular opening on the bottom for small cannon fire. All the bastions have interior tunnels inside, as we can see from some of these photographs. The Kula Tower served as a watchtower. It may also have served as a lighthouse. Its stones are mixed and it appears that stones from ancient structures were used in its construction.